for, well, for me, I want to live in my own surreal world. And so I try to create this world that some people may think is just perverted. But for me, it's, it's interesting, it's playful, it's not expected. And with, with these little elements that are kind of used as metaphors about life, it got to the point where in my art, in my career, I was bumping up on edges of what you, you, I was trying to do being a responsible person rather than who I really was. So in that respect, I still try to be thoughtful to others, but at the same time, I'm not going to be responsible for everybody. So with my art and with my life and how I enjoy my life and my pleasures, I'm going to be true to who I am. Well, I think I probably deal with humor quite a bit in my art because uh, when I was younger, I had nothing else going for me. In high school, I was like 5'2", 110 pounds. I was like tiny. If you saw pictures of me, I was not good looking. I had my hair, I had two types of hair on my head at the same time. One was like kinky, one was wavy. So I think you go with humor when you have nothing else. Or, or I drew. That's all I did. I, drew, I, drew, I was drawing all the time. So um, humor plays a big role, and I just loved humor since I was a kid. And so I tried to put it in my art. But doing it in a way that you also deal with like really heavy, real themes. If you do it in a playful way, you know, you can handle things that aren't, you know, where otherwise you'd be offending people. When I had a show at the Earl McGrath Gallery in New York, uh, the, the show was called The Happy Idiot and Other Paintings About Unattainable Beauty. And there um, I started questioning the notion of sacrifice and intimacy and about desire. And I created these girls called Infinity Girls whose arms and legs are looped together to make the infinity sign. Well, I had these, uh, the snowman that I called the happy idiot because I saw guys as happy idiots. I think we're all simpletons who we look at women and we get stupid. Um, just lustful and stupid and willing to do anything. I have a little ice cream cone named Creamy who just cream himself down for beauty. But the happy idiot, the snowman, he melts himself down. He sacrifices himself to let his love, the mermaid, live within his body of water. So that's like the idea of true sacrifice where his alter ego looks like the, the snowman but made out of flesh and he's willing to devour the mermaid. The whole notion of of, of, again, as an analogy for sex, of being truly giving and truly selfish and, and understanding both, the bittersweetness of life and, and accepting. And then the show after that was the, um, for the Love of Toby show. Then Toby was created to be my best friend, to be my mirror, he's somebody like my shadow who would follow you around, but he was the keeper of my dirty little secrets. And I kind of had him the keeper of everyone's dirty little secrets. So that was another another point where a lot of things that were going in my art and that was going in my life personally would find themselves in, in my paintings and in my exhibitions. There's another one of my characters is this little girl named Venison who um, was based on a, a real person who's uh, kind of like a love in my life um, who showed me passion and desire. So Venison's like a little wild child. I kind of created her. I was going through a divorce. I was um, traveling Europe and she started coming about, I started drawing her all the time. And again, it was like role play. This, the idea of this little wild child and that she put branches in her hair to become like a deer, like a deer girl. And I kind of imagined myself running away from LA, knocking myself out in the woods, being uh, woken up by this little um, deer girl who's licking my wounds, nurturing me back to hell. And then because, again, we're all just like animals, then she devoured me. And that's how I kind of saw um, passion and, and desire is that, you know, you, you want it, you, you're hungry for it, and then sometimes you can't control yourself, you know? And, and you go too far to the point where you almost kill the thing that you love. Everything in my art is all very bittersweet, and the bittersweetness is pretty much a major theme in everything I do. And it's not that it makes things horrible, it's just part of, of life, and that's what life is. And it's the beauty of it that makes a great song, that makes a great story, 
Everything isn't going to be happy. Everything's not going to be perfect. My goal is to find the human truth, find um, things about the human condition and not being able to, to stop myself because I think I may offend somebody. My goal isn't to offend somebody, but if I do, tough.